Hello everyone, I'm Paul Osmond. I am in evenings because of a big major accident and the delays that are going on in Midtown Atlanta and it's going to affect all of the southeast because we are talking about the collapse of 85 uh, near Piedmont Avenue. Um, you know, it's interesting that I saw this uh, from TV and I was about to go to bed because I get up early in the morning and I said this is just a major situation where it's going to affect not only me coming in but thousands of people commuting from every which side, from the north side, from the south side, all across the metro, because it's a pipeline, that area, to go on Georgia 400, on 85, to Lenox, uh, Beaufort Highway, uh, to Buckhead area. So it's, it's definitely gonna have an impact on, on how you do your business. The best advice I can have is just if you're uh, just joining us and, and figuring this all out, is to have a plan to leave very early. Uh, maybe leave an hour early because there are some interstates that are going to be very affected by this. We have Renita who is asking, how bad is it, Paul? Uh, I think it's going to be very bad because I'll tell you what, because it happened at this time and they're still working on it, that I don't think they're going to be opening 85 in that area because one area, I think it was the northbound side that collapsed, south side, side did not collapse, but is it structurally sound to allow cars and traffic to go over it I don't think so. I think they're going to keep that closed. I mean, that's just wise advice. So when you're talking about that, then you're talking about traffic being diverted a little bit nor further north of that, maybe to Lenox. Uh, I knew Shallowford, all the way to Shallowford on 85 was backed up. So it's very hard to get in the city. Then you're talking about Georgia 400, too, merging. You can't get, you can't get in there because that's an area that's going to be shut down as well. So inside the perimeter, from 400 inside to... Uh, to Midtown from 85 inside to Midtown is gonna there's a possibility you won't be able to go anywhere so that's why there's uh, some good alternate routes to get around there but it is a big deal for sure so why don't I show you some of the graphics that I've, I've developed and try to see what's happening around here I kind of did a 3d and what this is is this is uh, 14th Street 17th Street what I'm gonna do is just kind of zoom into some areas and just to show you I'll kind of describe this this is the split this is the split 75 85 this of course 85 on the traffic map, when you see this area, that means shut down. So you can go on 75 here. And what's interesting is they were having a, folks go south on the northbound traffic to get onto 75 to get around this. But I want to show you some other things. I know this is going to be a tight zoom. It might make you crazy. But I'm going to show you exactly where this happened. This is Buford Highway. Um, let's see where this is. Okay, th this is the Buford Highway area. This is the area that, uh, that came down right here that right here here's Piedmont Avenue here's 85 it's this chunk that fell down so this is the uh, the Buford connector this connector takes you all the way to Georgia 400 now the interesting thing here is this is still open this is still open but there's massive delays as they're getting everyone kind of off on this uh, Piedmont and over to Monroe but you can't get underneath this so definitely can't get on the interstate I want to show you something else and, and take you a little bit more upstream and show you what's happening uh, as we get closer to uh, Lenox. On 85, you, you're not going anywhere either. This is southbound traffic. They're taking traffic out near Lenox Road because you can't go in that direction because it's closed down. So this is the kind of situation I think we're going we're gonna to definitely uh, deal with tomorrow morning. Now, I want to take this map out just to give you a, a clear perspective and show you. See this purple area on the traffic map? That means shut down. So this is 400, shut down just near Lenox, shut down to get on 85, shut down all the way to um, it's almost 17th Street, very slow and shut down. So it's very hard to get onto 85 here. Look what happens on 85. Blocked. Uh, you get a little bit of relief. Blocked. And so you're not going to be able to merge onto 85 to get to town as well. So also want to show you some areas. That's how you would get in in that general area. But what I want to do is take it out to the perimeter because I know a lot of folks will be coming in from the northeast side. And I want to try to tell you, this is Cobb County. This is 75, Dunwoody, Alpharetta, Lawrenceville area. There's the purple area. So that's the heart of Atlanta. Those are the thoroughfares that get you in. So here's what's probably going to happen. Folks from Alpharetta, Dunwoody are probably going to take the top end to get onto 75. And trust me, 75 is going to be a very busy interstate tomorrow. Not only from that, but also just the normal traffic traffic coming in from Cherokee County and Cobb County to get into the city. So although you may be avoiding the shutdown, you've increased the traffic during tomorrow and probably for the next few weeks on areas that already are pretty hard hit. That's one area. How about you folks in Gwinnett County? You have, you have two options too. You can either go south on 285 to get to I-20 to get into the city or go over here, which would be a nightmare too, to add Gwinnett County traffic onto 75 to get in the city as well. We got Veronica Paul who is asking about 285. 
285. Um, 285 is good right now, and that's gonna be, but that's going to be busy, as I mentioned right here. Instead, say for instance, people in Lawrenceville, Snellville, Winder area, Gainesville area. Instead of going 85 into the city, all of a sudden they have to go now on 285. So we're talking about increased traffic on the perimeter. Uh, not only from Gwinnett County, but also from Fulton County, Alpharetta, Roswell, um, Sandy Springs area, and to get on this. So this area, I think, between 20 northbound to Spaghetti Junction, over to the King and Queen building, over to uh, the Cobb Cloverleaf is going to be very, very busy tomorrow and for the next few weeks or so until they can figure out a strategy on how to get people into the city from that direction. All right, we have Katie who is asking how okay. bad will, uh, will it be on Georgia 400? It's going to be horrible. I mean, 400 to get to 285 is not going to be a problem. And, and I want to make this point too because uh, as I was driving in, I drive in Georgia 400, I was thinking about these people that have medical emergencies who have to get to Northside or St. Joe or Children's Hospital. Is that it's, That's okay. You can get down there. That's the exit I kind of took over to get back on the 285. So it's going to be okay to get there, but I think they're probably going to keep that closed near Lenox or somewhere near that because Lenox is, you're able to get off to Lenox and take Peachtree to get to where you're going. So okay on 400 to maybe get to the hospital and no problems there, but if you try to get into the city, at least for now, it looks like they're going to keep that blocked and, or unless there's some strategy that develops overnight. You know, another thing I want to mention is that uh, especially for you folks who've lived here for a while, you know the back roads, you know how to get to somewhere. There are probably thousands of alternates I could give you coming from every which way direction. But those were just some of the big areas, but there are also some other areas as well coming in from all points uh, to the south and to the north. So just just use that, but allow yourself a lot of extra time because a lot of folks, uh, it's going to be a lot slower tomorrow and for the next few weeks probably in those areas. All right, Carolyn wants to know how far is this from Buckhead? Oh, it, I mean, it, the area that is was hit, I mean, near Piedmont, that's a thoroughfare into Buckhead, as well as uh, the Buford Connector. I mean, that, that those are areas that are uh, that I know you can take Buford Connector. Um, I'm gonna get my geography south to get on to uh, go to Buckhead. So that's an area that's also gonna be area. So right in this general area where Buckhead is, these are all this area. I mean, this is quite amazing. I know it's kind of tragic and 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 bad news, but. It's remarkable that this thing is going to be affecting major, major connections into the city, in and around the city of Atlanta. Not to mention the people going northbound. There's no way you're getting on 400. There's no way you're extending past, the, say, near uh, the connector to get to the north side. You have to take 20 around, 20 around, or you know, take uh, Roswell Road or some of those other areas, or Buford Highway all the way up. But even that is going to be a little tricky as well. So. It's really a good time if you can stay home. That's great news. If you can telecommute or do something like that, that's great news. But you have to avoid this general area and allow yourself extra time. It's probably going to take you at least a half hour, if not an hour more, to get into that general area for tomorrow morning. All right, we've got NY Nick. I'm guessing that's New York Nick. Uh, brings up an interesting point. Braves game tomorrow. Yeah, Braves game tomorrow. Well, it could be additional traffic because people will be going home. The, 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 I guess the good news in all of this is the flow will reverse itself, of course. So um, say if I was coming in from Dunwoody to get over here to the SunTrust, um, it might be increasing, especially if you folks coming from the south side to get there. North side, it should be maybe just a little bit more traffic to get there. But anytime you're talking about a Braves game and you're talking about them taking on the Yankees tomorrow, uh, it's going to be pretty crowded. A lot of folks are going to be there. So once again, just the, just the best advice. And I think that's one of the great things about SunTrust Park is how they developed it was to cater to families and to people who can get there early to enjoy. Now, not all the establishments are open, of course, yet, but there's going to be a family atmosphere or a place that you can go and go there early, eat, you know, just get ready for the game. So just allow yourself a little extra time to get to the game tomorrow and just see how it is. Because it, it's already going to be confusing because this is the first game, but also it's going to be confusing because there's going to be extra people on the road. Just an update, uh, we heard, Paul, that Atlantic Public Schools, normal, but DeKalb County Schools closed tomorrow. Right, okay, that that makes sense. Here's De DeKalb County is over here, and we're talking in this general area, backups all along, you know, near Shalliford Road in this general direction. Also, um, so you, they just, I don't know where buses run in this general area, but 85 being one of the most um, traveled th thoroughfares in the city is going to be shut down in some, and it's just, you know, it's just really confusing, and you know what? Tomorrow's Friday. Tomorrow's Friday. So that's a good news is that you're able to take off a day and maybe uh, 
not cause any more confusion on the road. You know, it brings me back to that uh, snow apocalypse or whatever it was a few years ago where everyone got on the road at the same time. I fear that if people don't stagger or leave early, especially on places like 75 or the top end perimeter, that it could get very crowded very quickly from people uh, figuring out, hey, I can't take 400, I can't take 85. So having a plan and really getting there early and leaving early preparing is gonna get you there at the safest manner possible. Yeah, that's all the questions so far. Cool. Well, that's the general trend. I'm going to keep updated on this uh, information. This is probably not going to change because I don't think them. I don't think they're going to reopen any things because of safety matters and what's going on here. Uh, if anything, there's probably going to be uh, more delays or more closings of some areas. So, in the meantime, just keep it here. We're going to keep you updated as, as best we can. Once again, there's just so many alternates to this uh, situation, but very. This is uh, this is a big story. It's a national story when you're talking about interstate inside the city limits that has collapsed and caused a lot of problems. So we'll keep you updated here on CBS 46, CBS 46.com, and we'll see you at 11. Julie, we go now with our team coverage to CBS 46 is Adam Harding, who is live at the scene. So Adam, walk us through what it looks like right now. Bobby, we're right above Piedmont Road, which is closed right now. Let me step out of the way and show you because a huge stretch of Piedmont is closed near the inner highway right there. That's I-85. Off in the distance there, you see the flashing lights. Those are the crews that are actually on top of I-85. You can even see the signs for I-85. And the smoke that is billowing from when flames reignited earlier this morning, this entire stretch right off of Piedmont Circle in northeast Atlanta is shut down as the investigation this morning into what happened yesterday continues. I-85, the height of Thursday's rush hour, a fireball shooting into the sky. One of Atlanta's most traveled highways collapsing, shutting down the city. We have uh, DOT has uh, put their inspectors in place. They have contacted the original um, crew, who uh, the company who built the bridge in the first place, and they are sending their people to assess the extent of the damage. And we're trying to determine everything we can about how quick can we repair it and get it back in service? The governor confirming there are no reports of any injuries, firefighters working for hours as traffic was at a standstill. It's going to take some time to get it repaired and get it back in service. My friend called me online, told me when I was at work, said, where are you? Are you home? I said, no. So he was like, uh, don't come home. What do you mean, don't come home? The bridge right by the house collapsed. I was like, what are you talking about? Investigators now digging into the cause of the fire. Spools of fiber optic cables stored under the interstate, likely fueling the flames. The view from Google Earth on the ground giving us a look at just how much there was. I know there was a lot of that around there. and Obviously, that was plastic that was burning. But this is, this is a big deal. Overnight, drivers seen abandoning their cars on the highway, a sight this city has never seen before. I don't have the ability to tell you how long this incident will take to correct or to restore on inter travel on Interstate 85 northbound or southbound. Repair to this essential interstate is our top priority. And we take you back out live here to Piedmont Road. We're showing you right now where the area is blocked off. You see the barriers right there on the front side of the highway right before the overpass and the road is blocked off as crews continue their investigation. They will be here all morning long. We're live this morning in Northeast Atlanta. I'm Adam Harding, CBS 46 News. Adam, thank you. The fiery collapse on I-85 on the northbound side has commuters scrambling this morning to figure out a new way to work. CBS 46's Rebecca Schramm is live for us with the aftermath of this collapse. Rebecca. Hi, Amanda. Yeah, we're just a couple of hundred yards away from where Adam is because we want to show you how the surface streets are affected because of all this. We're uh, just west of I-85 and they've got Piedmont shut down right now in both directions. The only thing drivers headed sort of eastbound, southbound can do is turn right onto the Buford connector. They cannot get onto I-85 northbound because this is the spot where an entire section of the elevated northbound lanes of the interstate collapsed onto the surface below. Let's show you some video we shot. When we first started our shift a few hours ago, there were still flames here at this scene, hours 
after the initial fire. It had apparently started back up, so firefighters had to douse it once again. You might be able to see here the once elevated lanes of the northbound side. That's now flat on the surface below. The head of the Georgia State Patrol warns us this bridge collapse on I-85, which is a major artery into and out of Atlanta, is going to shake things up for a lot of commuters for who knows how long. Most of us are used to our routines. We're used to that one way we come to work, one way to do our business. So this is the time to start planning uh, and looking for an alternate route on how you do your business. Yeah, and I want you to take another live look at the traffic that's already building here on Piedmont Road as drivers try to get through here. We're seeing many of them jump the curb and turn around once they realize they can't get through. Otherwise, they're forced into this one lane here and they're forced to turn right. The commissioner brings up a good point. The Braves' very first game in the new SunTrust Park, it's an exhibition game and it is tonight at 735. Now that is several miles from here in Cobb County. But remember, there are going to be a lot of people who don't know their way around to begin with. And on top of that, you've got all of these people who would normally take I-85 and they're scrambling to try to figure out a way home. So this is going to be a madhouse tonight. If you're headed to that game, you definitely want to get there very, very early and be prepared for a mess in the heart of Atlanta for perhaps weeks and maybe even months to come as they try to replace this uh, elevated surface here of the interstate that collapsed to the ground below. We're live in Northeast Atlanta, Rebecca Schramm, CBS 46 News. All right, thank you so much, Rebecca. One way to avoid this area of I-85 and the traffic calamity that is going along with it is to ride MARTA. That's right. Too bad we don't have a more extensive yeah. subway system, but it'll have to do. We have CBS 46's Astrid Martinez live for us at the Shambly Marta Station. Astrid. That's right, Amanda. Public transportation officials are urging people to use Marta. I want you to take a look at this parking lot here at the Shambly Station. On a typical day, this place is usually pretty packed. It's still pretty early, but we are seeing commuters slowly trickling in, and that's what MARTA officials want to see more of, because if you can see from some of this video that we shot yesterday, some aerial scenes, this traffic is going to be a mess. So MARTA is working with several traffic agencies to ease traffic headaches expected today. Rail service will be increased. Times will also be extended. Now MARTA will also have more employees on hand to answer any questions and clear up any confusion that passengers may have. Keep in mind that hundreds of thousands of people usually pass through the I-85 corridors, so those people will be looking for other ways to get around. And if you are going to be on the roads, officials say travel times will be affected and bus schedules will be unpredictable. People that we spoke with say all they can do is wait. I, I hate it for the people who are stuck in that because I don't know how tomorrow is going to be any better. I mean, it's that entire stretch 85 close. I don't know how you're going to get to work tomorrow. So as we all know, this part of I-85 that is shut down is heavily trafficked. If you drive through there in the morning or afternoon rushing, rush hours, you know that it gets as packed as it can get. This is a significant event that we're dealing with, so it's going to be a very, very long time. Make sure that if you are going to travel that you do consider public transportation or carpooling so you can reduce the amount of cars on the roadways. For now, we're live in Chambly. Astrid Martinez, CBS 46 News. All right, Astrid, thank you. And we're talking GDOT says 250,000 cars daily use that stretch of I-85. So what a mess this morning. Stay with CBS 46. We will stay on this bridge collapse, rather the interstate collapse this morning. Visit us on CBS46.com, our special section at the top has pictures that you have sent us as well as alternate routes to keep you moving as best as possible.